Welcome to Boyd's Presbyterian Church. It's wonderful to see everybody here this morning and on Zoom. This morning, our message will be brought by Reverend Derek Longbreak. I'm Ann Davies. Jerry Lynn Oglesby is so beautifully and kindly playing the organ. And she, yes, you are. <laughs> and Jeannie Labash continues to be our Zoom support. After worship, we will have fellowship in PW Hall, so please join us. We need volunteers for Zoom and to be liturgist. I can tell you it's nice to be up here. It's easy. Sharon has all the directions in here. If I screw up, it's my fault because Sharon does a wonderful job. Um, we also need volunteers to clean the sanctuary in PW Hall. Thank you for the volunteers that keep it so nice for us to enjoy every weekend. This... Um, this month, we have two lunch bunch gatherings where uh, we gather for lunch at different places. The first one is tomorrow at uh, Carabas in Germantown. Please let Brenda Hoyt know today, today's the last day, so that she can make reservations. And then August the 28th, we'll meet at the Red Robin, also in Germantown. Let Heather Huff know if uh, you can if you can join then because both should be really nice opportunities and then because we have two this month we'll skip september and go back to october and november if you'd like to host in october or november please sign up with melinda tibbles you get to choose the restaurant and uh, and the date uh adults getting together on september 7th they're going to be making holiday wreaths today's the last day to sign up uh, with Marie Allnut so that she can order the materials to do that. It promises to be a lot of fun and have you would have something to give as a gift or to use on your own front door throughout the fall. So uh, sign up with Marie if you can come. Now I uh, let us light the Christ candle. We light the Christ candle remembering Jesus said, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. Please stand as you are able and join in the call to worship. <clears throat> Great are the works of the Lord, studied by all who delight in them. Full of honor and majesty is his work, and his righteousness endures forever. We will we give, give thanks, thanks to the Lord with our whole heart in the, the company, company of the upright in the congregation. He has gained renown by his wonderful deeds. The Lord is gracious and merciful. He provides food for those who fear him. He has shown his people the power of his works. The works, the works of, of his hands are faithful and just. All his precepts are trustworthy. They are established forever and ever. Holy and awesome is his name. <clears throat> the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. All those who practice it have a good understanding. His praise endures forever. Praise the Lord. Let us pray. Lord, we do praise you and we give you thanks for this world. We give you thanks for life for caring for us so much, both in good times and bad times, and caring for us and for our soul so much that you sent Jesus to show us the way to live a life full of love. Your wonders are beyond our words of praise. Thank you for saving us. Thank you for lifting us up. Your presence with us at all times is amazing. Thank you for opening our eyes to see you, O oh God, our rock. Amen. Amen. Let us join together now in singing hymn 476, O oh, worship the King, all glorious above. <laughs> I worship the King, the glorious above. Oh, gratefully sing, 
God's power and God's love, our shield and defender, the ancient of gates, a billion in slander and word in wind praise. Oh, to tell of God's love. Oh, sing of God's grace, whose robe is the love, whose kingdom is face. A chariot of heavenly thunder comes forth, and bright is God's hand. We of the soul. He heard with its story of wonders of old. Almighty thou Established in fast by a changeless deep, proud in past life, the sea. I found it okay, but tongue sound. It breathes in the air, it shines in the light. It streams from the hills, it descends to the earth, and sweetly descends in the dew and the rain. Frail children of God and people spray in the to be trust or find to faith. Thy mercies have tender our virtues. Our maker, defender, we give You may be seated. <laughs> Let us now join together in the prayer of confession. God, we are precious in your sight, yet we often forget that we are your beloved. We confess that we are a distracted people. We make selfish choices, hurt each other, and perpetuate injustice in your world. We have sinned against you and are deeply sorry. We repent of our disregard of you and of each other. By the power of your spirit, forgive, restore, and strengthen us to live in your light and walk in your truth through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. <clears throat> Hear the good news. You are children of the Holy One. He loves you so much that he sent Jesus to die for your sin, that you might have new life. He also put his spirit into all who believe, that you may live in his way. In, In the, the name, name of, of Jesus, Jesus Christ, Christ, we, we are, are forgiven. forgiven. 
so with grateful hearts and thanks for the forgiveness we have received. Let us stand and sing. As it was in the beginning, it is now and shall be. Please be seated and join me in the prayer of illumination. Oh God, by your word, you provide all we need for salvation, for wholeness, for abundant life. Draw us now by your spirit that we may discover your will and follow in your ways through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. <clears throat> Our first scripture lesson is from Second Kings, First Kings, rather, chapter three, verses three through fourteen. Solomon loved the Lord, walking in the statutes of his father David. Only he sacrificed and offered incense in, at the high places. The king went to Gibeon to sacrifice there, for that was the principal high place. Solomon used to offer a thousand burnt offerings on that altar. At Gibeon, the Lord appeared to Solomon in a dream by night, and God said, Ask what I should give you. And Solomon said, You have shown great and steadfast love to your servant, my father David, because he walked before you in faithfulness, in righteousness, and in uprightness of heart toward you. And you have kept for him this great and steadfast love and have given him a son to sit on his throne today. And now, O oh Lord, my God, you have made your servant king in place of my father, David, although I'm only a little child. I do not know how to go out or come in. And your servant is in the midst of the people whom you have chosen, a great people, so numerous they cannot be numbered or counted. Give your servant, therefore, an understanding mind to govern your people, able to discern between good and evil. For who can govern this, your great people? It pleased the Lord that Solomon had asked this. God said to him, because you have asked this and have not asked for yourself long life or riches or for the life of your enemies, but have asked for yourself understanding to discern what is right I now do according to your word. Indeed, I give you a wise and discerning mind. No one like you has been before you, and no one like you shall ri arise after you. I give you also what you have not asked, both riches and honor all your life. No other king shall compare with you. If you will walk in my ways, keeping my statutes and my commandments, as your father David walked, then I will lengthen your life. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Our second scripture lesson is from the book of Ephesians, chapter 5, verses 8 through 20. Let's listen for God's word. For once you were darkness... But now in the Lord, you are light. Live as children of light. For the fruit of the light is found in all that is good and right and true. Try to find out what is pleasing to the Lord. Take no part in the unfruitful works of darkness, but instead expose them. For it is shameful even to mention what such people do secretly. But everything exposed by the light becomes visible. For everything that becomes visible is light. 
Therefore, it says, sleeper, awake, rise from the dead, and Christ will shine on you. Be careful, then, how you live, not as unwise people, but as wise, making the most of the time, because the days are evil. So do not be foolish, but understand what the will of the Lord is. Do not get drunk with wine, for that is debauchery, but be filled with the Spirit as you sing psalms and hymns and spiritual songs among yourselves, singing and making melody to the Lord in your hearts, giving thanks to God the Father at all times and for everything in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. This is God's word for God's people. A friend told me this story from growing up. And um, I believe him because I knew him and one of his brothers pretty well. But he and his two older brothers wanted to try parachuting. And so they decided they would jump off the roof of their garage and use big those big black plastic trash bags as parachutes. I know what you're thinking. That doesn't seem like a wise thing to do. But they climbed up on the roof and they jumped off thinking that those trash bags would slow their fall. And one of them broke their ankle. Now you think they would have learned that they had seen that this was a foolish thing to do, but they did it another time and another brother broke his ankle. People do things that are foolish. Maybe they're not always as clearly as foolish as those young men, but there are things that are done and people don't see them as foolish. And they repeat the actions because they are in darkness. They're seeking after their own will. And Hello. Yeah. As we believe Jesus and take him into our lives, we see living in a different way. We don't just go with the flow. As author Tom Wright puts it, Think about who God is. Think about who you are and learn to live in the light of God and his love. We have the opportunity for wise living, for doing what is good and right and true. We try to find out what pleases the Lord, not what pleases ourselves. And we learn this by doing, not maybe we wish we could learn that just by being in church, just by reading the Bible, but we learn the will of God by doing. We engage with others rather than isolate ourselves. We have God's light, but we still need to choose in our interactions not to please ourselves, but to please God. And in this way, we reveal Christ and his spirit in us and in our actions by actively seeking good. We try to be morally upright. We try to have integrity. And we try to have beautiful character. And what I mean by beautiful character is that people are attracted to the way that you do things. People are attracted to the atmosphere you create around you that builds others up and points to Jesus. Those who follow Jesus will live differently. The scripture says that our lives will shine. And our lives shine because they're a blessing to others. And they're a blessing for our community. 
When we're living in this way, it reveals and exposes the selfish living that dominates our society. The scripture reminds us that we need to wake up to the opportunity to live in a way that brings life rather than a way of life that brings death. We awake from the sleep of carelessness and sin. Have you ever sat in a meeting hoping that the person in charge won't call on you? Have you ever dreaded when the call to volunteer comes or the opportunity even to do something that might take a little more work presents itself? Alternatively, are there times when you really care and you want to be involved, but someone won't let you or you can't see the way forward? It's easy to just sit back and basically slide through life, expending little energy, hoping that things work out, and not thinking about the impacts of our lack of action. We have to wake up. We have to wake up to the opportunity to serve God. When we choose to serve God, Ephesians 5, 15 and 16 reminds us, be careful then how you live, not as unwise people, but as wise. Make the most of the time. Well, there's three key themes. Awareness, wisdom, and urgency. In Christ, we're invited into a new life of service. And when we're aware of this, we need to figure out what it means to live wisely. And we need to put this into action. In Christ, we see broken places in the world. We see, as we look around our friends and others, we can see the spiritual places where they're hurting. We can see this sometimes by their actions. We can see sometimes this by their withdrawal from us and from others. But we don't just see when we're in Christ the hurt. We see that each of us in the church can bring healing but it is difficult to figure out exactly what to do. And so we tend to put it off. We put off doing hard things. That's our nature. We tend to put off making a decision unless we're 100% sure where we're going. Well, we wisely want to do the right thing. We want to make sure our action's not going to create more hurt. However, it's rarely clear the exact action to take. And we don't have all the time in the world. So how will we use the time that we have? This is a big question for each of us and for our church. What will we do? How will we live with the time that we have as those who seek to follow Jesus? But well, we want to live in a way that's not foolish, in a way that understands the will of God. And so we try things. Those with evil intent or those who live in darkness also try things. And I learned um, this week that venture capital investors will pour millions of dollars into up to 20 different money-making ideas only hoping that two or three of those investments will work out. Because one idea that works can gain 10 times or 100 times or even 1,000 times the initial investment. Now, we don't have money, but we do have time and faith that we can put to use 
to address the challenges of the church and that others face today in our world. And even if we don't successfully address every difficulty, we need to try. Living wisely means taking action out of our love for God, even knowing that not every action will turn out how we want it to be, but trusting that God will take our action and use it to do something beautiful. The alternative is that in our quest to deal with our challenges, the church's challenges, the church and us will miss out on the will of God for us. And Ephesians uses the metaphor of being drunk to illustrate how this happens. This is not a lecture about drinking alcohol, but when someone drinks to get drunk, they may do so to escape monotony, to make things easier so they don't have to deal with their reality or to dull the pain they feel. And this can result in not seeing clearly, in doing things that one regrets. And in the end, one feels bad. Churches actually can act in similar ways because they're overwhelmed by evil and hopelessness. They don't want to deal with difficulty and get stuck in indecision. They turn inward and become deadened to the world and try to make things easier to bear by just surviving. Churches stop seeing reality clearly and often end up engaging in regrettable behaviors that end up making things worse. There's a better way to deal with the lack of hope, with the monotony, with the pain, with the difficult that we and the church see and experience. The spirit fills us so that we can live wisely. The spirit leads us to focus on building up the body of Christ to building up others, to focus on the good of all, and to focus on doing right. The Spirit fills us with awareness, with wisdom, and with urgency. When we would rather ignore and do our own thing and delay or wait for others to do good, the Spirit gathers us to worship and give thanks. Because participating in worship and fellowship is wise living. Participating in worship and fellowship encourages us to live in a way that's pleasing to God. Corporate worship orients us in our actions to God. When we sing in our hearts, our minds don't wander into the darkness of hopelessness and helplessness. When we worship together, we remember the power of God and what God has done in our lives and in the world. We remember that we are not alone. As we sing, we affirm our hopes and the possibilities that the love of God in Jesus Christ brings. As we gather, we encourage one another to live out that love as a community of faith. Together, we give thanks. And giving thanks at all times recognizes that God can do good in every situation. There is certainty that God is in our life and that he is at work in the world. At the session retreat, last week, we made a list of wins or how we have seen God at work in our lives and in the church in the past year. And I want you to briefly try it. What is a way that you have seen God at work 
in your life recently? Maybe even today. Let's, I'm going to give you a minute to think about that. What is a way you've seen God at work in your life recently? Even today. Maybe you're not sure what that means, but what's a win that you've experienced recently? Maybe this was easy for you, and already you've had two or three things you thought of. Maybe it was more difficult. I'll give you the, what I call the easy answer. Um, we can each give thanks for waking up today to life. But we don't always see each day as a gift of God. Giving thanks reminds us to see each day as a gift of God, not just another day to get through. Let's wake up to reality. God is at work in our lives and in our world through Jesus Christ when we don't feel good, when we're experiencing joy too. Don't sleep through the opportunity to do good. Don't sleep through the opportunity to give thanks. We have the opportunity, both as individuals and together as Boyd's Presbyterian Church, to live a life that reveals the love of Christ, both in worship and in action. Every breath, even if they're painful breaths, is an opportunity not only to rest in God's peace, praising him, but an opportunity to live wisely as children of light in this world. Let us pray together. God, speak to us your words. You know if we need to hear words of comfort or words of challenge. You know whether we can see your love at work in our life right now or not. And I pray, Holy Spirit, that you would open each of our eyes to see the goodness and the love and the mercy that you've put into us so much that we can share with others. So give us that courage to act and to seek your will. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. I invite you to stand with me and sing our hymn, Be Thou My Vision, 339. Be thou my vision, O Lord of my heart. Not be all else to me, save that thou art. Thou best of thy day or by night. Waking Thy presence by night. Riches I need not, nor vain empty praise. Thou my inheritance, the way thou reigns. First in my heart, pray God of my treasure thou be thou my wisdom and thou my true word. I never with thee. 
Please join me in the affirmation of faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead, he ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please be seated. And uh, we no longer pass our uh, collection plate, but please think about the wonders that God has bestowed upon each of us and think about how you can share with others, with the church, with WOMCO, with the community. Let it be so. And I'm going to add another thing that you can do while we can take some time and consider about how we offer ourselves and our lives to God. There's a clip out in the bulletin about sharing your favorite hymn. So we've talked this morning about a way to offer our lives to God is by singing. So um, if you're interested, you don't have to do it this week. This will be available for the next three or four weeks um, to put your name in a hymn that you'd like. And um, in October and November, we'll sing um, eight of those hymns, and you'll have an opportunity in church, whether you don't have to take it, but you'll have the opportunity to briefly share why you picked that hymn and why it's special to you. So that's one way. The other way is if you would, we're going to take prayer requests in a moment, but if you would rather <clears throat> fill out your prayer request, you can put that in the um, offering plate as well. So I'm going to give you a minute or two in silence as we offer in music, in prayer, and as we offer our lives to God. And let us stand now and sing together as we receive our offerings. Thank God from you all that my sins let us pray we give you thanks for all that you give to us and so we offer to you our song our prayers our lives Lord, take all the different things that we offer. When they don't seem to be working, we pray that you would bring to us your peace and give us strength to offer more, to offer something different. And take everything now, we pray that we offer money, time, our actions, and make them beautiful. 
and use them to bring healing in places of brokenness in our world. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated. We'll continue to offer our prayers to God. I'm going to read the two that I've received and then I'll give you an opportunity to share any other things we should be giving thanks for or any other people or things in our world that we should be praying about this morning. We're going to be praying for Ray, who is in hospice care right now for comfort. We're also going to be praying for Kevin as well for healing. Are there others that we should be giving thanks for, other things we should be giving thanks for or praying about this morning? Father, put your prayers for Brother John. Thursday was his 65th anniversary, and he slept and his leg in his face. He asked the doctor if he would wrap it up as a gift to give to his wife for the 65th anniversary. So, you know, he's okay. so we're giving thanks to John. Oh, we, I know, you can go after that just a second. We're giving thanks, um, John, though he had his leg amputated, um, it went well because of his sense of humor. He was offering um, uh, it as a gift to his wife on um, their 65th anniversary, which they also celebrated. celebrated. Yes. Yeah, it's not doing well. We had surgery on his leg and it's just been pretty tough. So we're also, this is a different Ray that we're praying for, um, uh, Juanita's nephew, um, who is needs healing right now as well. I have two. Yes. For Hammett Hoff, who's yes. in Shady Grove Hospital, but hopes to be back at his residence next week. And for Betsy, who's traveling, driving back, visiting her daughter in North Carolina. So we're... Um, Praying for Hammett. He was in Shady Grove Hospital right now. Um, he's coming home Tuesday, is my understanding. And also for Betsy as she travels um, back from North Carolina. Right. She's been down there a week. Yeah. We, we continue to pray for Todd for comfort and peace. Yeah, thanks. Prayers for Jean, our neighbor, who's been in the hospital for seven months for surgery. And what's his name? Jean. Jean. We're praying for Jean. He had open heart surgery. Let's pray together. Lord, we want to start out by giving thanks. We give you thanks um, for John, for his sense of humor, for um, celebrating 65 years of marriage, and also for um, a successful operation. We pray that that might help his health improve. We pray and thanks for our community, for people who are leaders in our community and in our church. We pray and thanks for the relationships that we have, for our friends and for our neighbors. But we ask for wisdom for all of them. We pray that you would bring wisdom to those leaders in our community and to our political leaders, that they would do good. We pray for the leaders of our church and we give you thanks for each session member and deacon member and trustee. 
We ask that you would guide them and give them wisdom. We pray for church leaders in other churches, especially those that we are partnering with, St. Mark's United Methodist Church and Darnstown Presbyterian Church. We ask a special prayer for wisdom for each of those churches and their leadership. We ask for wisdom for ourselves in our relationships as we live and as we care, as we work. We ask for wisdom in those interactions. We pray for wisdom in the midst of our griefs, in the midst of the losses that we feel. Show us how not just to handle, but to live in the midst of that. We pray for wisdom in our anger, especially in those places where it's anger that's lasted for a long time, anger that we've held on to. Lord, we pray that you would give us wisdom in our choices. Lord, you know we always face choices and we need your help. We need your guidance. Help us to know how to do what is good and right and just. Lord, we pray to and lift up to you those that we care about, those that we love, those that we know that are in need of your comfort, like Ray and Todd. May they have peace as their life is nearing the end. We pray for Kevin for healing. We pray for Ray, Juanita's nephew, for healing. We ask that you would be with him at Hop. Pray that you would guide him at this time in his life. We pray too for Gene as he recovers from open heart surgery. Give him the strength and love that he needs. And we also pray for those who are traveling. We pray for Betsy who's traveling back from North Carolina. And we're praying too for all the students who are going um, away to college. Lord, we ask for your guidance and wisdom. Renew each of us with your love and your spirit and your peace this morning. And we close this prayer by joining our voices together in the prayer that you taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Let us stand now and sing our closing hymn, 466, O oh, for a thousand tongues to sing. Um. Oh, for a thousand tongues to sing, my dear Redeemer, whose praise, the glories of my God, the triumphs of God's grace. Jesus, the name that our tribes are fears, thou bids our sorrow cease. Tis music in the city, tis life that held and peace. Christ breaks the power of intimacy. And sets the prisoner free. Christ's blood can make the simple free. Christ's blood avail for me. My gracious master and my God assist me to proclaim. To spread through all 
the earth abroad, the honors of thy name. How will we use the time that we have? Now may the God of peace, who raised from the dead our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the great shepherd of the sheep, equip you all and equip us all together to do every good thing in his will. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen.